The Toxic Cloud is the name of the book that Michael H. Brown has just written. He is the man who first dealt with, uh, for a national audience, the problem of the Love Canal. He's with us again this morning, and it's nice to have you back. Nice to be here. Also with us today is Judy Hoover, who lives down at Uniontown, south of Akron. She lives at the edge of the Uniontown dump site, and uh, she has paid a health problem, health price, a health price for those problems down there. Good morning. Nice Good morning. to have you here this morning, Thank Judy. You. The poisoning of America's ear. What, what Judy has had to contend with down at Uniontown, I would gather, is closer to what people in the Love Canal area had to deal with. Some of the levels that they're showing me, uh, some of these chemicals they're finding in the people's blood in this area, uh, appear to make it uh, every bit as serious a situation as as the Love Canal. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are problems all around the Cleveland area and in Cleveland itself. Of course, you have trouble in your, with your blood, uh, Judy, or what? Physical reactions to where you live? Yes, there's a lot of. Uh, I've suffered a lot of chest pain through the one chemical. And does that uh, chemical get airborne? Does it come out of the dump site and get airborne? The one chemical that I do have that's causing a lot of the problem is in the air, soil, water. All but right. all the other chemicals are airborne. And uh, what is the chemical that has caused you your, your distress? The worst one is the toluene, because mm -hmm. I was taken in for a heart attack three times and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. well, Even the you, paramedics uh, thought it was a heart attack. How do you know that that's attributable to what's in that dump site? Well, I really can't mention my doctor's name without his permission, but uh, we've had extensive testing done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose some maybe may say a little bit like a tendency to blame the victim, but that area down there has been notorious for years as, as a dump site. And I keep wondering, why would somebody move there well, if they see, had a choice of going someplace? Joel, you know that it's been there for years. We didn't, the ones that moved in. We weren't told. When you were sold? The when house. the house was sold to us, we had no idea. Where, where had you come from to move there? Uh, Portage Lakes. And, and you didn't know that or nobody told you, gee, there's a big dump over here? Oh, no. If, if, you know, there's no way you can really hide from this. There's no way you can get a, around these chemicals. There's about 15 to 20 percent of the smog in the Ohio Valley comes from Texas. So what I'm trying to say is from this Texas. stuff from Texas well, and Louisiana. This stuff's all over the place. I know, but it, but it, it's probably worse when you live right on the edge of it. It's it certainly day you're next to it. It certainly is worse if you live near a factory that that is, is leaking these gases and so forth. But I think we have to look at the problem not of one of isolate uh, of going on like we are and trying to. Uh, isolate people from those situations when they develop or avoiding them, but rather just stopping them at the source. Uh, Judy, have there been other health problems in your family? Are you, are you, uh, are you alone uh, uh, the person having problems with? Well, I've only, I only have a son with me, and he's got the same chemicals, only lower to where he's not had any problems mm -hmm. yet. And we do go to a cancer specialist every two months to, to keep check of our, our blood count. To monitor it. Right. Mm -hmm. Why, why do you live there anymore? I mean, if it's this, this bad, why haven't you sold it and tried to leave? Or, well, you well, can't sell it. it. It's, they have to tell people that there's a toxic waste over there. Nobody told you. No, but it's law now. It wasn't law then. How many people would you estimate are, uh, are affected in one way or another by uh, environmental chemicals? Is there any way to tell in the world? You can look at things as extreme as Bhopal, where close to 2,000 people died from a little chemical that got into the environment. Nobody knows. I, uh, I could tell you this, that you and I, everybody in this room has dioxin in their fat. Mm -hmm. Everybody has PCBs in their hair. This is how pervasive these chemicals have become. A lot of the fish in the Great Lakes are highly contaminated with pesticides that evaporate from the fields of the deep south and travel windborne and then fall out uh, like uh, toxic uh, rain. But uh, nobody, has, nobody can calculate uh, what the repercussions are health-wise, but some people think it's every bit, it takes as many lives each year, at least as, as uh, AIDS does. A lot of talk lately about the ozone layer and the holes in the ozone layer. Is this all tied to this kind of thing? Well, that's a chlorine compound that's causing that protective shield to dissipate up there, and it could cause a really calamitous effect on our, on our climate. There, are, uh, there was a cover story in Time Magazine a, co a couple weeks ago saying that the United States could become a desert land in the Midwest and, and Canada would become the new breadbasket uh, in a more powerful country. So within 70 years, if, if they keep dissipating this protective layer that controls climate and things of that nature. Is it possible to turn this thing around? Sure it is. How? And uh, well, first of all, we have to stop relying so much on plastic. 
We lived for a long time without plastic. I don't think humanity needs that in order to uh, survive. Without plastic? We, we, without pla I'm not, no, we don't have to get rid of all plastic. We have to make biodegradable plastic. We have to make plastic with le less toxic materials. We, have, we use 60,000 commercial chemicals in, in this uh, country, and some, something tells me that perhaps we can do without the more toxic ones. When you say uh, plastics cause us difficulty, how do, how do they do that? What plastics? I mean, are there things that we should ban from our homes? Well, some plastics give off vinyl chloride, a compound found uh, in, the, in a dump in uh, Uniontown. Vinyl chloride can cause liver uh, cancer. We've known that for, for years. So, yes, there, there are certain plastics we should ban. What's the responsibility of, let's go back to the Uniontown dump a second, of the people who dump things there and the people who own that property? Do they have any responsibility to get rid of this or treat it in some way? The, the people? Who, the those people who, who put it there? Who operate the dump sure. and those who put the material there? They're the ones who profited off the manufacture of it. You see, th this is a problem of greed in this country, that these companies are greedy and uh, they, they see profits, they see that it costs a lot of money to to uh, to do things uh, the right way, so they don't do it the right way, and and uh, they don't uh, care about uh, uh, people like uh, Judy. What's being done for her situation? Well, she'd have to address. That's them. what we're fighting now. We're trying to get the companies to uh, um, pay for what they've done. You know, try try to help us get this cleaned up. We want out of there. I do. I want completely out of uh, yeah. the area. And so do a lot of the other people. And when we did with the one chemical, I mean, the doctor told me it's like drinking six glasses of booze a day. I don't drink, and I'm on medication I couldn't drink. And this is just a small part of what's hitting a lot of the people around there with the cancers, the epilepsy. Um, in my own household, you know, we, we suffer from bad headaches and nausea all the time, the chest pain all the time. We're fouling our own nest. That's the message here this morning. We'll take a quick break. Uh, if you have a comment or a question, call us up at 578-1000. We're talking today with Judy Hoover, who lives at Uniontown down near uh, Canton, Ohio, south of Akron, and uh, Michael Brown, who has written about the toxic cloud. We'll be right back. We're talking about uh, toxic wastes right now, especially those that are in the air these days. And you used to tell me the story, Joel, when you used to cover the Akron City Council years ago yeah. when you were a newsman. The guy from West Virginia was the president of the president Akron City Council. Council. He used name? to say, uh, Ralph Turner, I remember, a nice man, but back then the thing was people would complain about the air pollution from the rubber factories then. Now there are no rubber factories left. Mm -hmm. But he used to say, I love that smell. That's the smell of jobs. The smell of money. The smell of cancer and that's, sometimes. Right. I mean, but the, I think one of the problems with the environmental environmentalists, basically the environmental issue, is it seems that they're always in conflict with people's livings. That we have the idea that to clean up the environment, or at least to make it tolerable, somebody's going to have to spend money, somebody's going to lose their job uh, as a result of that. And I think you're always going to have that tug. And, and you know, it's untrue, because you take this national effort to clean up toxic dumps, which came to be after the Love Canal crisis up in uh, New York State. That created jobs, because it takes people to clean up the mess. Uh, jobs are created. Uh, and I, I'll also like to bring up another economic point, and that's that it's cheaper to take care of these problems, to control these emissions and so forth, than to treat cancer, and much more effective. In the long term, yeah, but I think the short term thing is people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs because you want to shut down their factory. Oh, that's, their that's, that's, uh, that's brought up all often, the time. all the time, even in the best of times. Mm -hmm. Well, now, how many of the chemicals, the harmful chemicals in the air right now around us, are, are things that we, uh, we watch and keep track of? Are there very many? Well, like I said, we use 60,000 chemicals commercially. There are 8 million registered, and we regulate 7 as, seven? Far, as far as the atmosphere goes. Not 700, but just 7. seven as far as uh, the toxic, uh -huh. not, what they call non-criteria pollutants. So that if dioxin is floating around in this uh, studio, Nobody monitors uh, for it. If it's floating around a downtown Cleveland, which surely dioxins and furans and all these compounds are in a city like Cleveland from all of the different sources here, uh, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody monitors for them. And yet uh, there's, there's hundreds of these compounds floating around in the air, hundreds of the toxic compounds well, in small amounts. There was uh, recently a little 
conversation between the president and, and the prime minister of Canada about acid rain. Uh, are we starting at long last to address some of these issues? Well, they're addressing acid, they guns. They're addressing acid rain, which is a regulated uh, That's one pollutant. Was. It's it's a uh, it's a regulated pollutant, but they're not looking at these toxic compounds like PCBs and all of these bad actors that have become famous uh, in the media. They're not regulated those as far as their long distance travel th through the atmosphere. We get DDT from Mexico. What do we have to do? I mean, what are we going to do about it? Well, I think first of all, like I said, uh, we have to, the really highly toxic materials, in a lot of cases, we don't even need to manufacture. A lot of these compounds aren't necessary. Uh, we should make biodegradable plastics. We should recycle a lot more. And if you're going to incinerate waste, which they're moving towards doing in every major city, I think you better do it in a place that is miles and miles from where people live, because you can create a lot of nasty compounds. Yeah, we're, we're in fear of being blown up. If they get in there and start digging, which they haven't done 75 percent of the dump, we're in great danger of being blown up. Explosively, we live with, you mean? Yes, we're the gases. Mm -hmm. well, and we're, we're far worse, excuse me, Michael, we are far worse than Love Canal. Far worse. Well, let's take some calls. Do you have a question, please? Good morning. Yes, um, I was calling, I live in Union Town, and I was wondering what effects it has when you're pregnant. When I was pregnant, I, we moved to Union Town, and I then had toxemia, and then my baby was taken early, and he has like a form of palsy. I was wondering if that had anything to do with the dump or the water. Who can answer? Well, nobody can answer that, uh, because nobody knows really the effects of these chemicals in combination with each other. You can't prove that a, uh, a person like that is being affected, but it makes you very suspicious. What's your question, please? Good morning. Yes. I live in the Mentor Painesville area, and when the wind is from the east, we notice a strong plastic smell in the air. I have called a couple of councilmen and the state EPA, and they were unable to find the source. How would you suggest that I, as just a regular citizen, track down the source and whether it is hazardous or not? Thank you. Well, perhaps you'd like to address that since you guys track right. down some. Right. We hold meetings pretty regularly, and we do have chemists in, and they are announced the meetings. They're in our little local newspaper, mm -hmm. and well, we put do, signs at the square. How does it help you find, uh, getting together gives you some support, but how does that help you find uh, where well, these the things EPA are coming Well, the EPA started off giving us, the Ohio EPA started off giving us a main list of chemicals that they did find. As of now, we're getting no more information from them. So we do have some definite proof of some of the chemicals. Have you any advice to her? Yeah. Here, she's one person. She smells this. What can she do about it? I they wish they she'd, can't find she'd come and, and basically what we've got to do is stick together. It's all political. Well, I'm going to give her a phone number here in a few minutes, and she may be able to, with that phone number, find out where she can come to a meeting and maybe learn something more about it. Definitely. That's what they all should do down there. There is going to be a rally at the Union dump site, and it's going to take place when? This weekend? October 31st. October 31st. And you're going to release 500 balloons down there. What will the balloons say? Well, they're going to have the toxic waste names on cards, and we want to see how far these balloons go, and this shows how far the air does go and uh, what people are breathing. And the number you see on your screen, 699-3224, that's the number down there. And people can ring up for information about this event. And our other caller can call that number to learn more about uh, how people can get together to address these problems. I want to show you the book that Michael Brown has written. This is called The Toxic Cloud. And he takes a look at the uh, pollutants that are in our air that we breathe every day and uh, tries to give us some uh, feeling as to how urgent it all is. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you back. Well, the, the people of Uniontown cloud. thank Mike also. Well, thank you very much thank also, Judy, for coming up to be with us today. Good luck to you down there. Thank you. Judy Hoover.